I want to show you um, how far we have fallen because it is important for us not to go over the cliff with the rest of humanity. And it is easy to do that. It is easy to get engaged in, um, in seeing people differently. In, the, in the, um, the book, The Great Reset, we talk about the, the uh, dislodging of everything that you think you know and the way uh, that life is going to change in the world just because of technology. I, I'm going to do a show. Uh, I want to write a whole book on the on futurist stuff, but um, I, I want to do a show here in the next week. Please do. Would you do your best to force me to do it because I keep getting sidetracked on what our children need to know for the job uh, of the future? Right now, we're still thinking about sending our kids to college and everything else. Almost all of that stuff is going to be worthless very, very, very soon. AI can do so much. Any job that, that will have a future to it will be something where it is creative thinking, and I'm not so sure about that. Um, AI it can already write music. Um, but the most important thing that AI cannot replicate is empathy. It is cold and calculated. It cannot fake empathy. It doesn't understand empathy, and it may never. It's why AI in the sci-fi movies, are, it's always so scary, because it is cold logic. So any job that is going to uh, be there in the future will be something like a nurse or a doctor or a teacher you will have the the teachers will have everything judged, you know, and graded by AI. Everything will be done, but the one thing that you can't replace is that friendly face, that kindness, the one that can look into your eyes and see the pain inside. Same with nurses. You are going to have a doctor. I guarantee you in 10 years you're going to want to know what AI says over your doctor. The doctor will not be as well-informed as AI. However, you don't want the, the AI to spit out and say, you have cancer, you have six months to live. You'll still need someone who is empathetic. Everything we do to enhance our empathy and, and teach our children to be empathetic will be a godsend to them in the very near future. I can't say that highly enough. I will tell you that... There are times I say things on the air, and I just had this feeling. There are times that I say things on the air, and I know them to be true and important. Teach your children empathy. Now, the, the, the reason I bring this up right at the top of the show is we are really going into a frightening place, and it is part of the Great Reset. You have to isolate people. This is this is from um, this is from any anything that we read in Sololinsky, all the way to the practices being used today in Washington and in the media, and also with the Great Reset. And I want to show you where we are where we are lacking, and it is coming in multiple places. But I want to stop first at COVID. Listen, here's the, uh, here's the L.A. Times on CNN. Listen. Paragraph that I highlighted from your column, it's this. Mockery is not necessarily the wrong reaction to those who publicly mocked anti-COVID measures and encouraged others to follow suit before they perished of the disease, the dangers of which they belittled. Expand on that. Sure. Yeah. You know, we have a sort of a cultural habit of not speaking ill of the dead, of treating uh, the deceased, as, uh, looking at the good they've done uh, during their lives. I'm not sure that in this case that's entirely appropriate because so many of them actually have promoted reckless, dangerous policies. And as I wrote there, they, they took innocent people along with them. So is mockery the only response? Well, I, well, I don't know. But as I wrote, every one of these deaths is a teachable moment. Okay, that's CNN. Let me go over now to MSNBC 
and Joy Reid. At some point, I feel like people who are willfully unvaccinated, fine, don't get vaccinated. But they need to start to pay a little bit more of the cost of what this is doing to our system. Uh, there are fines that, that, are, uh, that are levied in places like Germany. Germany has stopped paying for the tests, the virus tests for people who choose to be unvaccinated. They've ended quarantine pay for those without vaccinations. IKEA, the company, is slashing sick pay for unvaccinated UK workers. If you are a smoker, insurance companies can charge you more. They can charge you a premium of up to 50%, and you have to put that on the form when you apply for insurance. At some point, don't we have to make people who are just saying, I'm willing to take the risk to be unvaccinated, take the risk for me and take the risk for everyone I come in contact with. Shouldn't they have to pay more into the system because they are collapsing our health system? They're the ones in the ERs. Do we have the MSNBC guest that's uh, suggesting the triage list for the unvaccinated? There are many um, possible interventions that we can impose on the people who choose to continue to choose to be unvaccinated, Uh, increase insurance premiums, um, creating uh, a a list or a a triage list. So when people come to the hospital, maybe one of the first questions we ask is, um, are you vaccinated? And then that will direct them towards a certain type of care because we already do that. I can guarantee you when a patient comes in shortness of breath, like my dad, he got hospitalized three times in the past two years with shortness of breath but related to his congestive heart failure causing pulmonary edema the first question they ask almost every time is are you a smoker um i mean yeah. he's not and it didn't d- d- direct the care but these are there are several things that we can do this is against every bit of natural known freedom that we have always claimed to have here in america here in america the idea of freedom the the american dream is is not to have a car in the garage and a nice house and a picket fence. That's not the American dream. That's what the progressives made the American dream into in the 1930s and 40s. The American dream was to chart your own course, to be left alone as much as possible, and yet you participate as a community, as a good functioning member of community, and you help others around you that we do have a social contract, but it is not a social contract that binds. You can be a despicable person that says, I don't want anything to do with you, and you're not punished for that. This is the concept, the biggest universal concept that we have to decide whether or not we believe in. Were you sent to earth as a separate individual being that has your own faults, your own understandings, your own uh, strengths, your own weaknesses, your own sins, or are we, do we belong to one another? Now, I would say that just like every family, we belong to one another until one chooses not to belong to one another. We, you, you don't tell your children what to do once they become of age because they don't belong to you, they are their own person. And you've done your best to raise them right. But if they make mistakes, they make mistakes. And the more you try to hold on, the worse it will become and the worse your relationship will become. Well, that's exactly what we are starting to do now. We are now looking and saying, we have to control other people. And yes, they're members of our family, Otherwise, we completely disown them and cut them off. No. When it comes to our own bodies, we all have our own choice. Now, here's the thing I really would like to ask reasonably of people. I've been on the receiving end of all kinds of horrible, horrible death threats and everything else. Let me ask you what part of what I did was completely unacceptable and you would wish death on me. Was it that I got COVID before there was a vaccine? Was it that because I had antibodies and had antibody tests and I had several doctors tell me, don't take the vaccine now because you already have them. We're not sure what the vaccine will do. We're not sure science is not settled on this with the vaccine and the antibodies. It could help. It may not. Let's just watch it closely. 
I didn't take the vaccine, but I kept check- checking my antibodies. I did everything I could to stay healthy. I take, you know, I take my vitamins. I take zinc. I do everything that I'm supposed to do except get the four boosters and the vaccine. Others went another direction. They got the boosters and the vaccine. And some of those people are perfectly healthy today. Many of them are not. Because as we now know, this particular vaccine is three viruses out of date. It may lessen it, just like my uh, having COVID lessens uh, having COVID a second time. It may lessen the effects, but it doesn't stop you from getting the uh, from getting Omicron. Omicron is something we all expected. This is a good development. It is becoming extraordinarily um, uh, passable, transmissible, but it is also lower in its death rate, ninety-one percent. In England, they they stopped with many of the masking and uh, and the uh, uh, the rules and restrictions. They stopped those, and they said it was going to be a horrid a horror show. But it didn't happen. And in fact, now they have, everybody has had uh, COVID and Omicron, and it looks like they're pulling out of it faster than Europe and everywhere else. What part of any of this makes you feel so superior that you feel that you should take away people's health care? By the way, I didn't take anybody's health care, I paid for it in cash. Um, take away people's health care. Or wish them ill. What part of the, hum- of the human experience has died inside of you? What part of, what part of politics has made this so you don't even listen to another person's opinion? You have become a doctor. You have become a scientist. What's worse is those two things are not true. You've just become a soldier, and a soldier in whose army? And what is the real intent? I know we all want to give people the benefit of the doubt, and I do. I give many people, if not most people, the benefit of the doubt that they want people to be alive. They don't want people to die. However, I have a hard time giving you the benefit of the doubt if this is the kind of rhetoric that you choose to use all the time. How can I give you the benefit of the doubt when you're wishing people dead and you're wishing to mock them after they die because they didn't agree with you? Now, let's also separate the difference between people who were anti-vax, because those people exist, and there are people who are anti-mandate, which is what I am. I'm not anti-vax. I'm anti-mandate of the vax. I am for the individual making their own choice. And that is for you to go get the vax if you want it. I am all for that if that's what you want. I recommend it to anybody who is has multiple problems or is sick, old. They should get the vaccine. What makes you so superior? Now, I don't understand this because we're not at the beginning of this. We're at the end of this. And I want to read something to you from an op-ed over the weekend that I find extraordinarily disturbing. And if we start seeing each other as only enemies, as only people who are for the vaccine or against the vaccine, and none of even the gray areas, but that's how we define you, we are done as a society. 